Children's Church Online. Hey guys, Mr. Zach here. I am so excited to start our first lesson of Children's Church Online. For the next couple of weeks, we're going to be looking at why we shouldn't fear. The series is called Fear Not, and today's lesson is Fear Not. God is our protector. Are you guys ready to get started? Me too. But first, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for being our protector. Thank you for this time that we could learn more about you. Help us to, to grow in you. Bless this time now. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, you may be wondering, what is a protector? And I know, a protector is... Well, a protector is someone who... Oh, I can't remember. Let's ask Mr. Webster. A protector is someone that defends or shields from injury or evil. A protector is basically someone who keeps you from getting hurt. Thanks, Mr. Webster. God keeps us from getting hurt, too. That's why God is our protector. He protects us from all sorts of things including everything that you and I are scared of. Today, we're going to look at three ways God is our protector. Let's start by looking at 2 Samuel 22.3. Join me by opening up your Bible. And if you don't have a Bible, that's okay. We'll put it on the screen so you can follow along too. 2 Samuel 22 and verse 3. It says, The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my savior that savest me from violence. What a fantastic verse. Let's go visit the puppet stage to learn about the first way God is our protector. Come on. Whoa. <laughs> Fear not, madam. I will protect you from this dragon. I'm not a dragon. Ugh, how insulting. Those are the most foul breath creatures in all the land. Well, leave this girl alone, whatever you are, or else. Ha! You think you can take me on? I'll crush you. I know I'm not the greatest swordsman, but I know that God is my shield, and he will protect me. Psalm 3 3 says. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter up of mine head. So take this. Oh, ouch. Oh, that hurts. Leave me alone. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> thank you for protecting me. It's all in a day's work, madam. As Christians, one of our jobs is to trust the Lord. And when we do, the Bible says he is like a shield to us. Psalm 1830. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. Wow, thank you. You're my hero. <laughs> As we heard from the puppet stage, God is our shield. Now, you may have heard another word that also means shield. Do you remember what it was? That's right. The word was buckler, and it's a very specific shield. Let's see what Mr. Webster can tell us about a buckler. Oh, Mr. Webster! The kind of shield used in war. This shield was made of wood covered in leather and strengthened with steel. It was often four feet long and covered the whole body. That shield sounds like it would be very helpful in protecting a soldier in battle. I made a similar sized wooden shield. Let's demonstrate how a shield protects a soldier. Okay, I'm going to use this shield to protect me from getting hit with some foam darts. Check this out. Always put on your safety glasses before using foam darts. On to our next test. Wasn't that neat? Well, it gets better when we follow God in 
can trust him. God is just like a sheep. I'm here with my friend Jerry to share with you the second way that God is our protector. So, what is the second way? I thought you knew. Nope. I'm just a puppet. I don't know anything. Ugh. Remind me not to rely on you next time. Anyway, let's see. Oh, I remember. It's God is our refuge. Wow, that's great. Except, I don't know what that means. Well, a refuge means a shelter or protection from danger. Based on that, what do you think a refuge could be? A tank. A tank? Yeah, a tank. Why a tank? It's big and metal and protects soldiers in battle. Except they didn't have tanks in Bible times. Oh, right. Hmm. A castle. A castle has huge stone walls to protect people from attacking armies. I was thinking the exact same thing. And guess what? The Bible also says that God is a fortress, which is a fort or a castle. Psalm 91 2 says, I will save the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. So, let me get this straight. I can trust God to keep me safe from all things I'm afraid of because He'll protect me like a castle protects a king? That's right. Why don't we take a closer look at how a castle works? That sounds great. Here, I have some pieces to a castle. But having the pieces to a castle doesn't make it a castle. All these pieces lying on the ground won't protect this guy standing here. See? We need to turn these walls into a castle. If I make a giant wall, it may protect him from one side, but it's not going to protect him all around him. I could put this guy on this side of the wall, and he's going to be protected on this side, but he's not going to be protected from the other side. So we're going to turn these walls into a castle. So if I try to attack him from this side, or I try to attack him from this side, He's protected. The walls surround the soldier. And that's just how God is with us. God surrounds us with his protection. We don't have to worry about being unguarded from a certain direction because he surrounds us. The walls protect that soldier, and God protects us in the same way. The third way that God is our protector is that he is our savior. Let's take a look at how God saved Moses and the Israelites after they had left Egypt. The children of Israel were leaving Egypt. God had sent Moses to lead them out of Egypt. And after God sent ten plagues to Egypt, the Egyptian leader, Pharaoh, let them go. God protected them and led them using a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. After the Israelites left and started to travel to the promised land, Pharaoh changed his mind and wanted the Israelites back in Egypt. He gathered some soldiers and went after them. When Moses and the Israelites were almost to the Red Sea, they saw the Egyptians coming. They were scared. They didn't know what to do. The Egyptians were on one side of them, and the Red Sea was on the other. They looked like they were trapped, but God already had a plan to save them. He told Moses to continue going towards the Red Sea, and he told him to stretch out the rod in his hand over the waters. He promised the sea would divide, and that they would be able to walk across on dry land. The pillar of the cloud moved from being in front of the Israelites to the back. It came between them and the Egyptians. The pillar was darkness to the Egyptians, but light to Israel. When Moses got to the Red Sea, he did as God told him. He lifted up the rod over the sea, and the water divided so that they could go through on dry ground. The children of Israel quickly traveled through the Red Sea. They traveled all night to get to the other side. The Egyptians pursued after them into the Red Sea. God made their chariots' wheels fall off while they were in the middle of the sea. They were afraid and wanted to head back, but it was too late. When Moses and the Israelites had gotten to the other side, God told Moses to stretch forth the rod again. 
Moses obeyed, and the waters came crashing down on the Egyptians. God saved his people because God is our Savior. Not only will God save us from danger, he saves us from the punishment we deserve for our sins. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Sin is anything we think, say, or do that disobeys God. When we disobey God, we break his law. And because God is just, he must punish us for our sins. God loves us, though, so he sent Jesus, his only begotten son, to die in our place for our sins. When we turn from our sins and trust Jesus as our Savior, God promises us that he will save us. He forgives all of our sins, and we receive all of Jesus' righteousness. Wow, what an amazing God. Hello. Welcome to Memorize This, where we spend a few minutes memorizing the Bible. This week, we are going to memorize a verse about God being our protector. I love memorizing God's word, and I hope you do too. So, let's get started. Today's verse is 2 Samuel 22.3. The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my savior, thou savest me from violence. Now, say it with me. 2 Samuel 22.3 The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my savior, thou savest me from violence. Good job! Now, do you think you can say it after removing some words? Let's try. 2 Samuel 22.3 The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation my high tower, and my refuge, my savior, thou savest me from violence. You're doing great. Let's remove some more. Second Samuel 22, 3. The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower, and my refuge, my savior, thou savest me from violence. All right, now let's remove all the words and try one last time. 2 Samuel 22, 3. The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my savior, thou savest me from violence. Fantastic! Keep it up and in no time you'll be as smart as Mr. Webster. So, let's go over what we learned today, shall we? We looked at three ways that God is our protector. Way one. God is our shield. God protects us like a shield protects a soldier. Way two. God is our refuge. God protects us like a castle protects a king. Way three. God is our savior. God will save us from danger as he saved Moses and the Israelites. He also sent Jesus to save us from the penalty for our sins. And now that we know God is our protector, we don't have to fear because we can trust him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for being our protector once again. And Lord, help these kids to grow as they learn more about you. Help them not to fear this week as they believe and know that you are their protector. I pray these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. So thanks for joining me in our first Children's Church Online lesson. I can't wait to see you guys for our next lesson. But until then, remember, Jesus loves you. See ya!